Hi, this is D.W. Berman. Welcome to this week's video on LightWave and graphics and stuff. Uh, this week we're just kind of going over the different types of particles and how to add particles to LightWave. So I have here two emitters. One I've named HV emitter because it's a HV emitter, just a regular standard emitter. And over here we have a partagon emitter. And the difference between these two is the particle emitter or partagon emitter is actually generating single point polygons. And they are actual polygons, whereas the HVB emitter is just emitting points in the space. Um, I'll demonstrate what that's all about in a minute. First, I want to kind of go over how to make uh, particle generators. If you go to the Items tab in the standard default layout, we have a dynamic object uh, button here under the Add section. You can add a particle, and in this panel, you can pick. You can name the emitter, and you can pick whether you want an HV emitter or a Partagon emitter. You can also go over to the Utilities tab and come down to Additional, and at the top, you should have an FX browser, and the FX browser lets you add a particle emitter, either an HV emitter or a Partagon emitter. You could also add an object. In this case, I'm just going to add a null real quick, and go to the Objects Property panel, and go to the effects tab and you can add an emitter. In this case, it's only adds an, an HV emitter. And if you have, uh, this will work not just on null objects, but any object you have. So you can have uh, particles being generated by the points or the surfaces on whatever your object shape is. So those are the three basic ways of adding a uh, particle emitter. Okay, back to the, the discussion at hand. We have an HV emitter over here and a partagon emitter. As I said, the partagon emitter emits uh, points, emits single point polygons. And if I just hit render right now, hit F9, you'll see that I only get uh, particles, I only see something on the screen over on the right hand side. And that's because the partagon, the partagons emitter is making actual polygons. Now if I open up this, uh, switch over to VPR mode so we can see what's going on as we do things, and open the uh, objects properties, we can go to the edges tab and we can change the thickness and the size of these particles. So we can, we have a few presets, but we can also go larger on our presets. And uh, we can also go negative in our uh, in our uh, line thickness. Now the issue with doing that is you can get some interesting looks and do some interesting things really quickly with this. If you you know only need to stay a certain distance from the particles, the problem with this is kind of a hack. If you move the camera back, notice the particle size does not change, even though the particles are moving farther back in the distance so we the perspective doesn't work on that and as you zoom in closer the particles all stay the same size so it doesn't have perspective so that is a major limitation of that trying to use that method for anything productive but it's still a useful trick to know um, and that works with all as you notice you see this the particles are actually casting shadows so it's because they're actual geometry. Um, kind of fake geometry, but actual geometry. If you turn uh, particle blur on, and here I have it set to 200, you'll notice that uh, you get blurring on your particles, which can be handy if you want to have particle blurring. And it doesn't take very long to render because it's not really rendering real um, motion blur. You can use it in conjunction with real motion blur but uh, you won't see the preview of that in the VPR. Um, so those are the, the, the main things with uh, the Partagon, so why you might want to use them. Oh, I need to mention um, the Partagons are, you can change their surface settings using the surface editor. You can change it however you need to. Uh, in this case, let me just pump up the yellow and make them all luminous, and there we go. You can even make them reflective if you have something in the scene to for them to reflect. So you could do, yeah, well, you can figure out what you can do with it. But uh, because 
these are actual polygons and an actual surface. You need to save the object in order to save the surface setting. So over the Partagon emitter, you want to save that. And then there now our uh, surface settings have been saved. Okay, now back to the HV emitter. You notice it's not showing up in the render over here on the left side. So we need to add something to that in order for it to show up, in order for you to see those particles. And actually, those particles, you're not going to see them. You're just kind of, they're just there to position whatever effect you're going to add to it. And in this case, I'm going to add um, volumetrics and fogs, and it's going to be hypervoxels, which is probably what HV stands for in HV emitter. Oh, I'm on the wrong object. So let me select my other object. Silly me. Okay, you can use hypervoxels with partagons, but you might get some interesting shadows unless you turn the shadows off on the partagons object itself. So, okay, activate the HV emitter. Okay, there we have hypervoxels showing up on our HV emitter. I'm not going to get into the different types of hypervoxels. So there's lots of different looks you can get with that, with these settings. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things you can do with this. Uh, but for now, let just know that you have to have, uh, notice that the partagons are actually showing up in the reflections over here. You have to have um, something on HV emitter to, uh, in order for you to see the particles. Uh, you could also use uh, pixie dust to, to show, render the particles. Um, that's just another, another system like hypervoxels, sprites, but a little different. Um, you could also use the the HV emitter particles, you know, just the gen generic particles. You could use particles to uh, to drive your instances. So let me just come over here to geometry and add a cube, just so I have a cube, and I'll make it a little smaller. Okay, I have a cube there, and if I come over to my HV emitter and go to the object properties and click instancer I can add my basic light wave instancer and add an object which is the cube I just added and under type I'll just make it particles and there we have all of our instances based on our particle position um, you could the old-fashioned way of doing this before we had uh, particles was you had to use effects linker let me see if I remember how to do that. Hi, ah, go over to utilities. Nope. Uh, yep, utilities, additional effects linker, and you select which part, which emitter you want to pull the particles from, and which object you want to replace the particles with, and hit OK. And I didn't create enough of them, but that's the gen general way of doing it. It actually makes copies of the cube several times. Uh, as many copies of the cubes as you set. So let's see, copies, 200, I don't know how many particles I have. But there we go. We have the particle, the boxes moving with the particle positions. So um, yeah, lots of things you can do with particles, but I, I specifically want to show you the difference between HV emitter particles, regular particles, and the Partagon particles. Um, again, you can use all these other uh, instances and HV emitters and stuff, or H, uh, hypervoxels, sorry, use instances and hypervoxels and all that stuff on partagon emitters as well. But with partagons, you have to be careful to make sure you set their render settings um, so you don't have uh, the particles casting shadows and stuff uh, that you don't want. So, um, okay, yeah, that's the basic, basics uh, of the different types of particles in Lightwave. I am planning on releasing uh, a small video on how to do some basic, uh, simple fireworks type of stuff uh, using hyper, uh, using particles and the uh, different uh, emitters. So I just want to kind of go over the different types of emitters before I got into that. So uh, keep your eyes peeled on this channel or subscribe to this channel so you're notified when uh, videos like that show up. Um, I will hopefully have that out next week and at least part one of it next week and uh, happy light waving.